Shader is waiting for you to help in your garden. Download the latest version of Monster Girl Garden here. Link is also in the description. Also, if you want to support the development of the game, head on over to the official Noxious Game Patreon. Hey Shades, are you done yet? Holy shit! Welcome back to Dat Game. I'm Shades, and by reading the title of this video, you know what we're talking about today. Yeah, I know. Third time around the block. But since we did the Guardian Spell video, and we covered all the Sakura shovelware, a lot of people contacted me. People that knew the head of Wing Cloud, that could fill in the missing pieces, and tell me stories about the company that they don't want you to know. By the end of this video, your entire outlook on Wing Cloud will change. Even the Sakura games. Because what I'm going to tell you today are stories of people that were hurt. People that were screwed over. And a pattern of lies and greed. I'm sorry if this episode is a step away from the normal. But I honestly don't think I could sleep knowing that this information was buried. They've been hiding this shit for years. And... You know what? I'm going to take these off. Because when I tell you all this, I want you to see it. I want you to see my eyes. So, what do we know? Wing Cloud has been putting out Sakura games faster than Madden. Quality drops with each one. The artist's not really to blame, as we've discussed, it's more of a money-making decision. Sakura is now the cover brand for visual novels in the West, giving them quite a tacky name. As for the list of names we uncovered, well, this here is our guy, Exilim, aka Nick Farr. And before you think I doxed him and call up drama alert, it's pretty easy to find. I was pointed in the direction of hosting details of the website and legally they need to register their name. So Nick, aka Exilim, has a shady past. Let's go back to the beginning, where he met a one Bladefire. This is the earliest company I could find. Sources told me it dates back earlier, but this was a good starting point. Nick starts his company and created two games, one being Mankei no Hana, and the other, Tora no Tsubasa. Bladefire, who met online, is GM for him on these games, like an admin. Bladefire also takes the heat. As Toro no Tsubasa promises a new dungeon, players get excited. Toro no Tsubasa, I was um, helping him at first with the game design. I was actually the one who came up with the basic premise of it. Afterwards, when the game was released, I was made a, a game master, like a community manager, and I was in charge of like the community and uh, making sure that everything's fine. I did my best, but in the end, I couldn't do anything because, well, every time I, uh, the community told me or us about bugs and, and stuff they want to change, have changed or need fixed or anything, any problems, um, when I told him, he was always uh, talking about like there are no bugs, there's no, there are no problems, everything works fine, I don't need to do anything, and so like, as a even as a game master with a uh, direct line to the developer you can't really do much if the developer is like no I don't want to do it or there's nothing to do here. Blade is getting questions and Nick doesn't care telling him that the update is coming and players can wait. A certain feature that was always promised time and time again another world map or something that was underground where you can uh, fight specific special monsters that give special loot. People are getting frustrated Meanwhile, Nick is spending company money on personal effects. Not really taking care of players, but instead, 
himself. I myself, because I had like this direct line to him, because I was still considered his friend back then. I knew that that was the case because he told me most of the money should be reinvested uh, into the game, obviously. If you have like a game that is more like a service platform, like a free to play browser game that is supposed to be updated all the time. Also sometimes bought like expensive tech like uh, Apple MacBooks and stuff for himself. Blade gets annoyed at this and consequently gets blocked. You'll find out that Nick does this quite a bit to people he doesn't like. We were, uh, he was talking to me about, he was thinking about letting everyone go because um, apparently the finances weren't all that great or something and he wasn't really sure about like being able to pay anymore. That then led into um, an argument where he then found a uh, a bug report in one of the forums and just linked me to it and was like suddenly very angry and was just shouting at me that you do not do your work and i was like what yeah here there's a, a bug report why do you not do your work and I, I didn't even know what to say to that because what do i do with that i mean I, i'm not a programmer i couldn't just fix the bug and i was like well i told you about the bugs all the time you don't want to fix them what am i supposed to do writing in a very aggressive like caps lock manner like do your fucking work or something and then he blocked me and like the next day the the notice that i was let let go from him actually came in the mail he blocks them so they can't argue back hiring someone else in their place when i reached out to blade's replacement he didn't want his name documented so we'll call him number two number two is pushed into power by nick who doesn't care whether or not number two wants the job in the first place now the blame and weight of the problems is on number two freeing Nick from the responsibility. But hey, from the front, both games still look fine. They just seem like they idle more than anything. The art is something I want you to take in as well. Mankai no Hana's art is by Ryo Kudo, but Toru no Tsubasa's art is by a guy named Tony89. Nick outsourced for Tony because the exchange rate meant cheaper artwork. According to number two, the financial figures don't add up. I spoke to Tony and he was already working for a lower rate. Tony asked for a pay rise, and instead, Nick asked Tony to work for free. Basically, they had some financial trouble. They asked if they could delay my payment, and if I could continue working, but don't receive any payment for like a few months, if that's possible. And I just say that if you cannot pay me, I won't work for you anymore. And it's like too bad. But here's the thing. Tony was working with two other artists, one being Wanaka, who was also working on Toru no Tsubasa. Nick finds Wanaka and gets Tony to teach Wanaka his style, so that Wanaka can be Tony's successor. When 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 I was there, like, I was the like there was only two artists and Wakana. He ca she came way later before after me. She pretty much tried to the. The guy in charge, he asked to do a style similar to mine in Torano Tsubasa. While this is happening, Nick is working on his first entry into the visual novel scene with a little game called Sugar's Delight. Finance for Sugar Delight is actually taken from the browser game. The guy who in charge, he just wants to make a visual novel. So, and that is his, and this is his company, so he just took, he just make it. He doesn't we didn't really care about whether the game could do well or not. Blade saw it in production while he was still there. Note that Tony had already finished the art before he left. This Sugar's Delight, he, he was already planning and actually building that when I was still working with him and was still talking to him. Nick then finally reveals Toru no Sabasa's new update, but it's not the dungeon he promised. It's loot boxes. Instead of new areas to explore, it was below average items for real money. Users revolted to a site known as Zero TNT, a forum on which they could talk about the game without being silenced by Nick, as most of his moderators did in the main game forums. Next, a duplicate website named Cute Hero emerges, same game as Toru no Sabasa, pretty much a mirror image, with Wanaka and Tony working on the art at the time. An attempt at starting fresh, perhaps? Who knows? But it seems that around this time, Nick is looking to bail on AGB and Prezium Company. He was already pissing off Mungachu by not holding up the contract of paying for advertisement, and the sites are now on offer to anyone Nick can sell them to. And he does. The biggest issue here is the pay that the artists were getting, or weren't getting. 
It's the thing that really got me going on this story, and something that multiple sources have confirmed. An undisclosed source tells me that the site was doing around $2,000 in profit. If that's the case, then the pay is stretched thin with Tony and Wanaka. You see, Tony was only paid $1,000 a month for his art during his time working for Nick. And Wanaka? Tony confirmed that she was being paid a lot less for her efforts. Less than $1,000 a month. Some people even speculate it was as low as $500 she was earning a month to do art for the company. And it gets worse. She wasn't allowed to do any outside contract work to make any additional money. It's scary to think, but it's true. Wanaka sneakily does commission work on the side, but if Nick gets word of it, he deletes it at a moment's notice. Now imagine her living on her own, as the main artist with that little money. That could cover some bills and food if you're lucky. As an artist, we know how to get by, but it wouldn't cover everything, and don't even think about having any luxuries, all because Nick wants her all to himself. I've been told that she's actually scared of him, Whatever he said to her must have resonated, because she's stuck. And part of you working for this man isn't just low or no pay, but he loves to control all of your social media. I had a Skype account, which I was uh, in contact with him, and at some point he was like, you need a new Skype account. And he just gave me, uh, uh, he made it for me and just gave it to me. And I, w I was, at first I was a bit perplexed, but I lost that, uh, that uh, access to that Skype account at some point after he fired me because email address that was uh, registered for that was one of his email address. But I heard from other people, uh, especially uh, in, in uh, regards to Vanaka, the artist that he uses right now for most of his visual novel stuff, that he actually has access to her DeviantArt and, and, and Twitter accounts and stuff like that and he um, organizes them for, for her and uses those. and, and yeah, shares them, maybe even locks her out, I don't know. Nick creates Blade his own Skype and gives it to him, wants to control Wanaka's social media, which could explain why it was deleted. But sources have told me that talking to her usually ends in radio silence, or a message from Nick himself. Sugar's Delight is published under Necrosoft Company, but comes under heavy fire. Very early in development, Nick asks Stella Null for the music. Nick pays a down payment and Stella Niles sends samples. Nick decides, hey, I like these, but conveniently forgets to pay, owing 200 euro, which he never pays. This leads to Nekosoft being blacklisted by Stella Null. Meanwhile, Wanaka is working on the art for Demon Master Chris, but for some weird reason, Tony is credited. He's confirmed he's not done the art for this game. You can see that Wanaka's style is starting to come of age. Nick has complete control on this project, but nothing much else is known. Speculation that stolen code was used to create the game, but nothing conclusive, nor evidence of such. Manga Gamer publishes the title. Nick was ready to jump ship on Nekosoft by this point, but before he leaves, he heads to the visual novel database and changes a few logs, at least confirming it was him at the helm of the game. Idhouse Studios confirms they had a hand in creating the Wing Cloud name. They also have their hand in one of the first games to be created under the banner, Pirate Heart. Very early on in their partnership, Idas has left due to conflicting ideas. While this was happening, Nick hires Michaela Laws, most known for her roles in these fine, above-mentioned productions. Nick directs Michaela to cast voice actors for visual novels. Sekai Project replaces Idhouse and begins representing Wing Cloud. Michaela's actually quite a big key in the story. If she was still around in the company today, the Sakura games could have been amazing. Michaela was hired to write a visual novel in addition to voice actor sourcing. The novel in question being the one we know today as Sakura Spirit. Well, I was a part of this group called Voice Seiyu. Um, voice Seiyu is just was just this group of voice actors who were vetted through an audition process and had access to private auditions that we were able to connect through with companies who wanted to work with us. Um, and lo and behold, one of our heads was able to get into connections with the creator of, well, essentially the CEO of Wing Cloud. And we were offered two jobs. One was Guardian Spell, which everyone knows how that happened. And then the second was, raise some eyebrows a little bit, a project involving Fox Girls and Shrine Girls. So in essence, the Sakura name, the Sakura title was coined off of me because 
I was one, I was writing Sakura Spirit at the same time I was doing Guardian Spell. Michaela comes up with the name and a solid script, but Nick decides he would rather fan service and tits do the talking, and his script isn't what he was after. So I wrote down bullet points of like the plot, and I started the script, and I got a message from the creator saying, hey, are you going to be okay with still doing the script? And I was in college, so I really didn't know that what I said had any consequence. So I'm like, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to finish this in a, t in a quick time frame, because he wanted the, this done really quickly. Yeah. Um, I, so I told him, I'm not really sure if I can get this done in a, that amount of time, because I'm working on Seduce Me, I was working on Guardian Spell, I had college. Um, and so he's like, okay, well, we'll just put this on hiatus and I'll come back to you when we're ready to go. And lo and behold, they never got back to me. And all of a sudden in June, Soccer Spirit releases. They took the name, um, but I have to say that they bought it because the way I worked with them is that I wanted a part, um, I want a portion of the pay ahead of time. Okay. So I had them pay me for just a little percentage of what they would have paid me in total. Um, via PayPal. Sekai are now in talks with her to get voice actors on board for Wing Cloud's successful Kickstarter, The Guardian Spell. As I previously covered, money apparently never fully got refunded. Sekai decided to deflect the blame. You see, Sekai didn't want the voice actors to get paid more than $250. This isn't each, this is total. Divided amongst six people totaling at $41 for each actor to read over a thousand lines of dialogue. For the start of the job, uh, he was working with my boss at the time uh, for Voice AU, and they were kind of going back and forth of how they wanted to do the work, basically of just negotiating prices for voiceover, negotiating prices for um, advertising and all that stuff. And it, it kind of irked me a little bit when all of a sudden Dave messaged, Dave being my um, boss at the time, message me going uh i can't talk to the the winged cloud guy for some reason he blocked me and i'm like oh that's oh, yeah. a problem l l yeah let me see if i can contact him so i contacted him like hey is um is everything okay do you need me to head some projects do you need my help and so he's like yes i actually i was wanting to contact you about vo doing the voiceover and doing the um direction for guardian spell. Nick decides to talk to her directly and convinces her to take 450 to 600 or 75 to 100 for each actor. Honestly this is still too low but the actors starting out are willing to take the low pay, especially for an apparently good company. Back then even though it was our first project I still had the whole head of let's get the voice actors something they deserve. I wanted to try to push the expectation of what we could give because through the auditions he would I sent him the auditions of all the of all the actors for all the characters and he said himself like they were all very professional they were all high quality and I figured okay this is where I can kind of push the envelope before the Kickstarter even comes out and say okay well, how about this price and when he agreed to it I was ecstatic yeah it was still a crappy um, price tag but it was still something better than nickels like nickels for voiceover part of our agreement with getting voiceover into the game was promoting the Kickstarter, which kind of threw some of the voice actors off, but I'm like, you know what, if you guys want to get paid, we really need to get this to be successful, because the only way we're going to have voice actor voice acting in this game guaranteed is if we get this Kickstarter in its success. It got successful, and I obviously congratulated the creator of Wing of Cloud, and I went, hey, just so you know, um, please let me know when the script gets done, so that way I can send it to voice actors. We'll need a month to record, but otherwise, have fun and it would be weekly when I would contact them being hey is how can I get an update on the script can I get an update on the script and once in a blue moon he would respond or he would even get ahead of me and let me know what was going on by the time June hit I had realized that they had blocked any communication with me when they stopped replying to me Michaela is left in the dark a radio silence from our boy once again she manages to talk to other people on the project, but still finds that Nick won't talk to her directly. This was after the success of the Kickstarter. I kept asking for updates on the script, like, I need to know when the script is so I can tell my actors because that's my job. I need to make sure that the actors know that they can record sometime soon. And he would always say, yeah, the Guardian Spell script got delayed. And then he kept blaming the, uh, the writer, saying, oh, she's an amateur. She's been delaying this for, like, months and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just kind of looking like, all right, well, 
dang, that's that's a really big problem. Um, so I thought nothing of it until I started communi- I started asking again, um, waiting a little bit more time, and I got I started getting no replies, and I stretched it out to him. I stretched it out to Wanaka. I switched it out to the writer of the time, which I figured out who it was, and even the writer was just like, well things have been happening and I've been trying to fix it but don't worry I'm so sorry for the delay please let me figure it out and then those replies stopped and before you know it the Kickstarter is shit canned and news outlets throw her and her casting group under the bus as one of the reasons the game failed the reason Sekai Project decides to say they were asking for too much money. Lo and behold, I suddenly get a message from another one of my voice actors saying, Hey, did you hear about the Sekai Project calling us out? I'm like, wait, what? So I look up, and VN's Now is a really, really cool visual novel uh, news site. Mm -hmm. Um, Love the guy who runs it behind it. Um, He posts up about Sekai Project responding to their questions about Guardian Spell. And they essentially said that the voice acting was cut because the voice actors wanted a higher rate than what was originally agreed to. And this is how Michaela finds out about it too, not even asked for a statement on the matter. Now with confused and hurt voice artists and getting messages about her involvement in the downfall, she responds with a statement, but the damage is already done. That was when I pretty much had to put my foot down and go, okay, no, we're we're not going to play this game. And I had to pile up all of my documentation, send it over to JP, who is the creator, who is the head of VNs now, and went, okay, no, this is the actual story. <laughs> I, I constantly repeat, the minute they apologize, I'll forgive them. Mm-hmm. The minute that they apologize to my voice actors, I will let things go. Here's a part that I can't 100% confirm, but the dates align very well. During the time of the Michaela saga, Wing Cloud had a conflict of interest with Sekai Project, and leaves for Manga Gamer. It could be about the Guardian spell, although I'm unable to confirm, but former Sekai employees have heard stories about the elusive Exilium around the office at this point. Also during this time, Wing Cloud has began to work on Sakura Dungeon, quite a familiar game with Manga Gamer. They release a special edition of Sakura Swim Club with voices through Manga Gamer and leave shortly after due to having conflict with the game itself. Wing Cloud returns to Sekai Project. Again, this is all around the same time, and I know it looks like a mess, but you can kind of see the pattern. Now, a small field trip backwards to Sakura Clicker, where another company is formed by Nick. Exilium, Nick, just wants to get all those fingers in all those pies, so he decides to take his already existing engine for Sakura Clicker to create Clicker Hero, hiring new artists. But the reviews of this game are mixed to negative. Why? The game is lacking updates and fixes, but the artists are hired on for another job shortly after the release of Clicker Hero. But get this, those employees are still waiting for a response from Nick about the new game going ahead, and they've been on hold for over a year. Radio silence from Nick. Sounds familiar. We can only guess that the new game was abandoned, and back to Wing Cloud Nick is gone. Game after game rolls out. Quality or lack thereof starts to show. Small cutarounds in design for the Sakura series like face swapping and model templates. Inma is brought in for some of the other games, but unlike Wanaka, she's allowed commissions and a Patreon. She's allowed to adequately fund living. We can only assume that Nick didn't get her under his thumb like he did with Wanaka. And again, broken promises from games that are announced and fall out of existence and even a new game mechanic in Magical Girls. Magical Girls was labeled as a scam by fans that were paying for a fresh concept via Patreon. People started to get wise of Wing Cloud's antics, and money started to drip down from the company slowly. Only fresh eyes can be fooled at this point. So Nick makes the earnings of his Patreon private. As for Wanaka, well, I messaged her and she responded. Well, I like to think it was her, saying she would rather not do the interview, kindly declining. But I can only assume she's still working for nothing. She's not getting paid what she should with all these games under her belt. She's doing the most work and yet getting the raw end of the deal. And sources told me she wasn't even paid for some of her time at AGB or during her Demon Master Chris days. I hope she was paid, because by now, Carpal Tunnel would be setting in. 
Not to mention the stress of not having your own voice and not being able to make a livable wage unless you do it under the shadows. Nick, if you're watching this video, whatever bind you have over Wanaka, release her. Because I have a bunch of etchy video game developers ready to snap her right up. People that are willing to pay big money to make sure she's comfortable while doing game development. And Wanaka, if you're watching this video, message me. You know, if you feel like you can break away from Nick's hold, I can find you something better. Never feel like you can't run. Three more games have been pumped out. Sakura Gamer, Sakura Halloween, and the new title Legend of Arcadia. Arcadia was boasted as being separate from the Sakura series, but you can tell from the two seconds of playing it, they didn't learn a thing. All so very similar. Let me reiterate that this similarity is not the artist's fault. It's the person who doesn't want to spend money and would rather create quantity over quality. Just enough to attract people with sex drives to give him money. Inma and Wanaka and even the writers all deserve to spread their creative wings more. There isn't going to be a review of these games. Because after all of this, I'm just going to say the same thing. It would be the same game with a different flavor until the money runs dry or Nick bails to the next company. As for Exilium, aka Zerth, aka Nick Far, there's no stopping him. From the anger of the players of Torino Sabasa to the lies of his GMs, using music he didn't pay for, not holding up promises, running from conflict and ignoring quality, throwing innocent people under the bus to save face, running off with Kickstarter money, focusing on controlling people and turning them against each other, using money in the wrong places, not paying staff enough or anything at all, and creating an illusion. Nick will never change. This is a guy who, or this is a company that really just wants things fast, easy, and cheap. And if it's not going to happen, then screw the person who I'm trying to work with. And that is, and this is his company, so he just took, he just make it. He doesn't, we didn't really care about whether the game could do well or not. I don't think it's about passion or about him wanting to do high quality work or anything. It doesn't make any sense. So for him, it's just, a cash cow, he just wants the money. This video, like most drama stories, will probably be swept under the rug. Give it about a month or so. All of Nick's secrets will be hidden away once again, and this video will be nothing but a speck on the horizon. Which upsets me, because this means nothing will ever be done. The people he's hurt won't get an apology. The people he owes money to won't get paid. And Wanaka will be trapped. Which honestly rips my heart out. It's horrible knowing that Nick is part of this industry I love so much. An industry that he's tainted with his name. Nick is too scared to do anything. He would rather run than own up to everyone that he's hurt. He would rather stand behind other people and let them take the hits. But I really hope he sees this video. If you're watching this, Nick, I hope this hits home. I hope you look back with regret at everything you've done because there are a lot of people that haven't forgotten and I hope that more people that have been screwed by you step out of the shadows and tell their stories too and you know what after all the chasing I did after all the research that I did after interviewing countless people and hearing all these terrible stories I actually got Nick's contact details I got his email and I got his Skype I even messaged him on Twitter I asked him if he wanted to speak out, if he wanted to have his piece, have his side of the story, maybe shed some light, maybe apologize to some of these people he's hurt, and maybe give us another opinion to look at. But you know what? He gave me the exact response I expected. Radio silence. As I scroll through the valley of the tone of plains, I take a look at my life and realize I can't complain. Cause I've 
been playing the game for so long that even Mega Man thinks my mind is gone. But I ain't never crossed a game that I deserted. I'll be treated like a nerd, you know that's heard of. You better watch who you're calling and how you're trolling. Or you and your teammates might be banned to talk. I really hate to skip, but I gotta load. As they frag, I see myself in the dust and smoke. No, I'm a kind of G. The little gamers wanna be like on my knees in the shops, begging mothers for an Xbox. Tell me why. Live